Hey, it's Coach Reeves here, and today I'm going to help you get ready for test 3.1. We're going to do the review sheet. I'm going to work about half the problems on the review sheet, so hopefully uh, I can give you a good idea of what to do and get ready for the test. Okay? First problem, all right, it says find the greatest common factor. Now, they're going to ask, not ask you to factor, but just find the GCF. All right? So what do we want to do? If the lead term, remember, if the lead term is negative, then there will be a negative in my GCF. And then I have to decide on these numbers, 24, 64, 24. I need to find the biggest number that goes into all three of those. Well, it turns out the two of them are the same number, so that'll help. But my numbers are 24 and 64 and 24. So if this happens to you, you can use the factor tree and you can say, hey, this is two times 12. This is two times six. This is two times three. This could be two times 32, two times 16, which is two times eight, which is two times four, which is two times two. Now I could repeat this for the other 24, but it's gonna be the exact same thing as this 24. So I'm looking for numbers that they have in common. This has a two, this has a two. They have a two in common. This has another two. Well, this has another two in common, okay? This has a two. This has another two. So they have three threes in common. This has a three. Does this have any threes? No. So what do they have in common? This, two, this, two, and this, two. And so what that is, is two times two is four. Four times two is eight. The biggest number they have in common is an eight. So my greatest common factor is going to include an eight. Now we look at the variables. We look at the letter N. This term has an N. This term has an N. This term has an N. They all three have an n. We want the smallest exponent. n to the second, n to the third, n to the second. We want the smallest exponent of those. Look at the p's. This has a p, this has a p, this also has a p. So we're gonna include p's. p to the third, p to the second, p to the first. I want the smallest exponent, that'll be p to the first, right here. This has an m, but neither one of these terms have an m, so they do not have an m in common. This is my greatest common factor. That's all they want to see is just what is the greatest common factor, okay? Let's go to another problem. Now they want to factor using the greatest common factor. So that, that greatest fa common factor we just found, they would want me to continue and factor using that. So on this problem, my lead term, look, my lead term is a negative. So that will be part of my greatest common factor. Look at my numbers, 32, 8, and 56. 32, 8, 56. 2 times 16, 2 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2. 8 is 2 times 4, 2 times 2. 56, that's going to be 2 times 28, which is 2 times 14, which is 2 times 7. What do we have in common? Well, let's see. This one has a 2. This one has a 2. That has a 2. Okay, they have a 2 in common. This has another two, we have another two, we have another two. They have two twos in common. This has a two, this has another two, this has a third two. That's it, this, turn, this eight doesn't have any more numbers. So what do we have in common? Just like the previous problem, we have three twos in common. So what does that mean? Do we add those or we multiply? We gotta multiply. Two times two is four, 
four times two is eight. My greatest common factor is going to be an eight. Then we look at the variables. This has an X, this has an X, this has an X. X to the second, X to the second, X to the second. Well, they're consistent, so we're gonna pick X to the second. This has a Y, this has a Y, this has a Y. They all have a Y, but we want the smallest exponent. This is a four, this is a two, this is a one, so we're gonna pick Y to the first power. That is my greatest common factor. We need to figure out what we're gonna put inside the parentheses. So we divide each term by negative eight x squared y. Negative eight x squared y. Negative eight x squared y. I know some of you don't have to do this because you're smarter than me, but I'm gonna do this so I don't make any silly mistakes or try to keep them to a minimum. All right, so a negative 32 divided by a negative 8 is a positive 4. x squared over x squared, those can reduce, those will cancel. y to the fourth over y to the first. I can subtract my exponents, and that would give me y to the third. Positive divided by a negative is a negative. 8 divided by 8 can cancel. X squared over X squared can cancel. Y squared divided by Y. You can subtract the exponents, you can reduce that to a Y. A positive divided by a negative is a negative. 56 divided by eight is seven. X squared divided by X squared cancels y divided by y cancels so i can close my parentheses now i have factored using my greatest common factor let's try another problem they say factor completely always check for the greatest common factor first all right this is the review sheet but i promise you that will not be on the test to remind you okay all right so we're looking for a number that goes into all three terms Turns out that the number five, five goes into five, got five goes into 10, and you know five goes into here because it ends in the number five, okay? So we factor, they have a five in common. I have V to the third, V to the second, I have V. Okay, there we go. There's my greatest common factor. So we're gonna divide by five V, divide by five V, Divide by 5v. The fives cancel. v to the third divided by v leaves me with v squared. Got it? 10 divided by 5 is going to give me a positive 2. v squared divided by v is going to leave me with a v. Okay? A negative divided by a positive is a negative, okay? Then I have 175 divided by five. I'm not sure what that is. Don't be afraid to come over here and go 175 divided by five, or you could use your calculator, okay? But we remember how to divide. We could say that five goes into 17 three times, and that's 15. Remember the two, and then five times what? 5 times 5 is 25. That would give me a 35 when you reduce. 175 divided by 5 will give me a 35. The V's will cancel and you can close your parentheses. Okay? And that's how you factor completely taking out the greatest common factor. But wait, can you factor more? Oh, I don't know. Can this be factored anymore? We have to try. We have to try. So we're going to bring down our greatest common factor of 5V. We're going to see if we can break this trinomial into two parentheses. So look at this. The back side, this is a negative. 
We said if the back sign is a negative, my signs will be different. And we said the bigger number would get a plus. The bigger number has to be with the positive sign or the plus sign. So the signs are gonna be different. One has to be plus, one has to be minus. It does not matter where you put those. We're gonna break down, we're gonna break down the B squared as B times B. And then we're gonna break down this negative 35. We're gonna say negative 35. And because it's a negative, we're gonna subtract to find our combination. We know our factors could be one times 35. Two doesn't work, three doesn't work, four doesn't work, but look at that. Five times seven. Five times seven is 35. But how far, what's the difference? How far are five and seven? There's two. If we subtracted five and seven, we would end up with a two. This is the combination we're looking for. Yes, we can factor this. But we need the bigger number. The bigger number needs to get the plus sign. Who's bigger, five or seven? The seven needs to go with the plus sign. The five needs to go with the minus sign. That is factored. I'm not totally sure I did this correctly. What's a quick way to check? Well, one quick way to check is I could ask you to pinch this in the middle to multiply. Seven times V is a positive seven V. We could pinch it in the back. V times negative five is a negative five V. That would give me a total of two V. Is that what I was looking for? Yes. That's a good quick way how to check to make sure that we did this right and we got the correct signs also. So yes, this checked. So my answer, my correct answer, I didn't get to stop after I took out the greatest common factor. I got to keep on factoring my trinomial. This is what you have to mean when it says factor completely. You have to check to see if you can keep going on the factory. All right, let's try another problem. All right, so now we have to factor, but look at my A value. My A value is not one. This is a situation where you could use boxing, the box method, or grouping. I'm gonna try with the box method, okay? This tells me that when I break this down into two parentheses, the back sign, that back sign is a negative. I know my signs will be different. That means one will be positive, one will be negative. Now I will set up my box. I'm gonna set up the box. This is very similar to the grouping. It's your both just two ways of organizing your thought, okay? So we're gonna put your first term goes in the top left. Your last term, this negative 10, goes in the bottom right hand box. We're gonna ask you to multiply your A and your C value or your three times your negative 10. Three times negative 10 is a negative 30. And since that is a negative 30, we're gonna think we have to subtract. If it would have been a positive 30, we would add to find our combination. But we're gonna subtract. My combinations are one and 30, 2 times 15, 3 times 10, 4 doesn't work, and then we have 5 times 6. We want a combination subtracted, subtracted because it's a minus, but we want to subtract and find a combination that equals what? A positive 1. All right, so if we want those signs, we know the signs are going to be different. We want to end up with a positive 1. Remember what we said. This says that the signs are gonna be different. The bigger number gets that sign. The bigger number gets the plus sign. So the plus sign will go with the six. The minus sign will go with the five. Because that, when you put those together, will equal a positive one. So that's what goes in these two boxes. 
We're going to say one of them is a negative 5n. One of them is a positive 6n. Now we look for the greatest common factor. What do we have in common? Well, coming across the top, we have a 3 in common and the letter N. Across the bottom, we have a negative sign for sure and the number 5. Going up in the first column, we don't have a number in column, but they do both have an N. They have an N in common. In the last column, they have the number 2. Look, here's your minus sign, 3n minus 5. That tells you to put it in this parentheses, 3n minus 5. Then you take this and you put it in the first parentheses because this is a positive 2. n plus 2. Now you have factored using the box method. All right, let's try another problem. 9b squared minus 25. How many terms do you count? I count two terms. But what's in between my two terms? I have a minus sign. I come up I, and I look and I notice that this is a minus sign. In math, that means difference. This is the difference of two somethings. Is it the difference of two squares, two cubes? I'm not sure yet. So I'm going to see if I can take out a greatest common factor. 9, 25, no, they don't have a number in common, v squared, w squared, I don't have any variables in common, but look at your exponents, these are squares, they're not cubes, so this is not the difference of two cubes, but this is probably going to be the difference of two squares, because what, is 9 a square, sure, 9 is a square, 3 times 3, is 25 a square, sure, it's 5 times 5. You know v squared is, and you know w squared is. For all, it's obvious. So we're going to think this is the difference of two squares. When we look at this, we notice that the sign is a minus. Since it's a minus, we know the signs have to be different. One has to be plus and one has to be minus. Because that's the only way you can get a negative. We break down the 9. It's way at the front, so the 9 broken down goes in the front half of the parentheses. The 9 is broken down into 3 times 3. The v squared, it's in the front half, so it goes in the front half of v times v. The 25 is in the back half, so it goes towards the back, and it's going to be 5 times 5. And the w squared is going to be broken into w times w. There's the difference of two squares. Okay? Make sure you're looking, make sure you check to see if it's a difference of two squares or two cubes. Make sure you can check to see if we can take out a greatest common factor. Let's try one more. All right, here we go. We have three terms. Is it possible to take out a greatest common factor? Do you see a number that could possibly go into all of those? Well, they're all even numbers, so you know the number 2 goes into everybody. So we're going to factor out a 2. We're going to divide by 2, we're going to divide by 2, we're going to divide by 2. And we're going to say 50 divided by 2 is 25. B squared. Minus 60 divided by 2 is 30. The B, uh, 30B. Plus... 18 divided by 2 is 9. I'm looking at that, but I'm the math teacher, but I'm seeing, oh, 25 is a square, b squared is a square, 9 is a square. I noticed that could possibly be perfect squares. Okay? But my buddy, he doesn't see it. So we have to work it as normal. We have to work it as my a value is greater than 1. Because if you do not recognize this as perfect squares, you need to go ahead and work it as a is greater than 1 and go to the box or the grouping method. Okay? But we're going to continue with our parentheses. We're going to set up for our final answer. We're going to go to two parentheses. 
We're gonna say that the back number is a plus sign, so that means my signs will be the same. And then we shift forward and we find out that they are both gonna be minus signs. So let's go to the box method. Inside the box, the first term, 25B squared. At the back end, the plus nine. Now we multiply these two numbers. We multiply these two numbers together, 25 times nine. That's gonna give us a positive 225. Since it's a positive, we will add to find our combination. We want to find numbers, one times 225 on down. We want to find a combination that multiplies and gets 225, but when you add them, they will add up to 30. Remember, you can use your calculator and you can say y equals 225 divided by x. You can put it in your calculator, 225 divided by x. Then you can go to control T and look at your table as the graph. I'm gonna save you some time. This turns out to be 15 times 15. So my numbers are gonna be 15 times 15. When you multiply them, that's gonna give you 225. When you add them, it will give you a 30. So we're going to write 15B, 15B. We're going to see if we can factor. Coming across, we have a 5 in common and a B. Coming across the bottom, we have a 3 in common. When we go up, we have a 5 and a B in common. When we go up, we have a three in common. These are the exact same things. Does it matter? No, because we know, it doesn't matter where we put them because the signs are the same. So this is gonna be 5B minus three. This will be 5B minus three. You can be done if you want to. Or the preferred way, if you're a professional and not an amateur, we would like for you to write it as this. 5b minus 3 quantity squared. That would be the preferred answer. Okay? All right, let's try another one. I have 16x third plus 250. What's the number one thing that we try to do? You got to see if we can take out a greatest common factor. In this case, I'm going to say they're both even numbers. I'm going to try the number two because they're both even numbers. Is it possible to mess it up and not get the biggest, greatest common factor? If that happens, just redo it or keep taking more factors out, okay? But in this case, I'm going to try the number two, okay? I'm taking out a two. I divide by two. I divide by two. That's going to leave me with eight X to the third plus 125. I have two terms, look at this, I have two terms. So it's not a minus sign, so it's not the difference of two squares, it's not the difference of two, cube, uh, two cubes, but it's a plus sign. And we have learned of something called what? The sum of two cubes. Is eight a cube? Yes, I have memorized my cubes. Eight is two times two times two x to the third yeah that's x times x times x and 125 that's that last cube that i memorized that's five times five times five remember we asked you to try to memorize up to the number five or the number six know your perfect cubes this is helpful but this is going to be the sum of two cubes so we keep the two coming in the first parentheses in this first parentheses I'm going to ask you to find the cube root. So the cube root, the cube root of 8 is 2. The cube root of x to the third is x 
plus the cube root of 125 is 5. That took care of the first parentheses. In the next parentheses, we're going to ask you to follow this pattern. We're going to ask you to square, to multiply, excuse me, too fast, square, to change the sign, to multiply, and to square. We're going to ask you to square this first term. What is 2x times 2x? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. x times x is x squared. So we have squared, this is a square, we have squared the first term. We're going to change the sign from a plus to a minus or a minus to a plus. But we're going to change the sign. This is a plus, so we're going to change the sign. And then we're going to multiply. I'm going to ask you to multiply these two terms together. What is 2x times 5? 2x times 5 is 10x. Now don't worry. We know that it's supposed to be a positive 10x, but we have already said that we have to. We have to change the signs. You have to change it from a plus to a minus. You don't get to choose. Okay? Okay. And then we're going to ask you to square. We're going to ask you to square the back term. What is 5 times 5? That is going to give you a 25. And then we're going to close this out. And this is how you would factor. Take, include your greatest common factor. Include the greatest common factor. 2x plus 5. 4x squared minus 10x plus 25. In the first parentheses, you take the cube roots. In the second parentheses, you apply this pattern. Square, change the sign, multiply, square. Square, change the sign, multiply, square the back sign. Okay? All right, let's keep going. We're going to factor completely. But we count. We see one, two, three, four terms. When we see four terms, it is automatic grouping for us. We have to group. So we're going to go into grouping. We're going to group the first two terms together. We're going to group the second two terms together. Focusing on the first parentheses, we're going to see if we can take out a greatest common factor. I have the number 20. I have the number 16. Turns out that the number 4 goes into both of those. I have x to the third, I have x to the second, they have an x in common, but I'm gonna choose the smallest exponent. That's our rule. So we're gonna put our parentheses, we're gonna divide by four x squared. We're gonna divide by four x squared. 20 divided by four is five. x to the third over x squared will leave me with an x plus 16 divided by 4 is 4. The x squares cancel. I can close my parentheses. In the second parentheses, I'm looking for a greatest common factor. I see that the number 3 can go into both of those. I start my parentheses. I divide by 3. I divide by 3. 15 divided by 3 is 5. I bring down the x plus... 12 divided by 3 is 4. Do my parentheses match? Whew. That's a good feeling. When my parentheses match, that makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Okay? So my final answer, my final answer is I'm going to take these parentheses that are similar, and I'm going to say 5x plus 4. Please. Even though you could be tempted, even though you could be tempted, do not put squared here. Do not put it there. All I need is one of them. Just need one 5x plus 4. In the second parentheses of my answer, the final part, you take your greatest common factors, 4x squared, and my positive 3, and that would be my final answer. The common part goes in the first parentheses, your GCFs go in the second parentheses, and then you're done. That's your final answer. Okay? Let's keep moving.
I have to factor completely. I have two terms. I have a minus sign, so I'm thinking difference. Difference of what? Is it the difference of two squares, two cubes? I'm not sure, but I do know the first thing I have to do is see if I can take out a greatest common factor. In this case, this is an even number, and this is an even number, so I'm gonna see if I can factor out the number two. I divide by two, I divide by two, and that will give me 27 minus the twos cancel. That leaves me with a to the third. This is the difference. Is it the difference of maybe two squares or two cubes? Well, look at this. This is a cube. I memorized this. This is gonna be three times three times three. This is a cube. This is, the exponent tells you, but this is gonna be a times a times a. This is the difference of two cubes. You must, you must keep the two coming down, your greatest common factor, it is part of your answer. But in the first parentheses, I need you to write the cube root. The cube root of 27 is three. Keep the sign, it's a minus. The cube root of a to the third, that is an a. a times a times a. In the second parentheses, remember we're gonna do this pattern. We're gonna square, we're gonna change the sign, we're gonna multiply, and we're gonna square. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna square this first term. I need you to square this. What is three times three? Nine. We're gonna change the sign. It says change the sign. This is a minus, so we're gonna change it to a plus. It's gonna ask me to multiply these two. What is three times a? Three times a is three a. Then it's gonna ask me to square the last term. I need to square this. And remember, anytime you square something, it's always positive. A positive times a positive is a positive, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So that back term will always be a plus sign. So we're gonna square this and a negative a times a negative a is a positive a squared. There is your final factored answer. I know it starts small and finishes big, but this is the way you factor the difference of two cubes. All right, let's try one more. Solve by factoring. Remember, okay, look at what we got here. Okay, they're gonna ask us to solve by factoring. And remember what we said, if it's not equal to zero, we need to move some stuff to where it does equal zero. Now, don't be tempted to move the two x squared because it's the easy way out. We wanna keep our a value, the two, we wanna keep that positive. So you don't wanna move it to the other side and make it negative. It will make things way too hard for you. So we're gonna move the seven X, we're gonna have this. Two X squared equals seven, or excuse me, a negative seven X plus 30. We want to move the seven X over here. We're gonna go plus seven X plus seven X. We're gonna move the 30 over here. We're gonna go minus 30, minus 30. These will cancel and that will leave us with two X squared plus seven X minus 30 equals zero. So what do we do now? Well, my A value is a two. So we're gonna have to factor this when using the box method or the grouping method. Look at what we have. This says the signs are gonna be different and the bigger number is going to get the plus sign. So we set up our parentheses. Signs are gonna be different and we're gonna jump into the box. When we jump into the box, we're gonna put two X squared in the top corner. We're gonna put minus 30 in the bottom corner. We multiply those together and we get negative 60. That means you're gonna subtract because it's a negative 60. And we're gonna look for a combination that when you multiply will give you 60, 
but when we subtract, it will be 7. It turns out that we're going to use 5 and 12. Now, I'm not going to go through all the, uh, all, the, all the factors. We're going to speed this up because you've done this before. So we're going to put in, remember that it is a positive 7. So the plus sign goes with the bigger number. That is a positive 12x, and that is a negative 5x. What do I have in common across? I have a 2 and an x in common. I have a negative 5 in common. I have an x in common. And I have, ooh, this is kind of tricky, but I have a 6 in common. 6 goes into 12 and 30. So what do I have? I have my minus sign right here. This is going to be 2x minus 5. And I have x plus 6. We have factored, but we are not done. They asked us to solve by factoring. To solve by factoring, you put each parentheses equal to 0. Put each factor equal to 0. 2x minus 5 equals 0. We're going to move the 6 to the other side. We're going to go minus 6 minus 6. X equals a negative 6. We're going to move the 5. We're going to say plus 5 plus 5. 2x equals 5. We divide by 2. We divide by 2. And we get, let's move this up x equals 5 over 2. I'll accept the fraction. All right. So my answers are negative 6 and 5 over 2. Those are your two solutions. All right, just a couple more problems and we're done. It says, given a solution, find the other solution. So we're going to have to solve by factoring. We already know what one of our answers is going to be. We need to find the other factor or the other solution then, okay? Look what we have. We have 3p squared plus 5p plus 2. We're going to set up our parentheses. This says the signs are the same. They're going to both be pluses. So we're setting up our parentheses. They're both going to be plus signs, okay? But this time we have a three, so we're either going to use the box or grouping. And we're going to go to grouping this time. We've been using the box a bunch, but let's go ahead and do one in grouping. We're going to say 3p squared. And way at the back end, we're going to put a plus two. Very, very similar to the box method, okay? I'm going to ask you to multiply these together. I'm going to say three times two. Well, 3 times 2 is a positive 6, which means we're going to add to find our combination. We're going to say 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. Be careful. Which combination added, added together will give me a 5? You have to be careful because you could go 1 minus 6 or 6 minus 1 and get a 5, but this... This is a positive 6, so you're going to add, and you're going to say which combination added. We're going to use 2 and 3. So I'm going to have a positive 2p, and I'm going to have a positive 3p. And we're going to use grouping. We're going to, and we have four terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, and we're going to use grouping. Look in the first parentheses. Do I have anything in common? I have a P in common. And when we divide by P, that leaves us with 3P plus 2. Over here, I don't have a greatest common factor. So what do I do? Well, I know for a fact that the number 1 goes into everything. So that is my greatest common factor. My greatest common factor is the number 1, and this stays 3p plus 2. That's a good thing when my, my parentheses match up. So that's going to leave me with 3p plus 2 in one parentheses, 
excuse me, we can put that over here. 3p plus 2 in one of my parentheses, and the leftovers, my greatest common factors, the p and the 1, p plus 1. You would put that in the second parentheses. Are we done? No. You would have to keep going. This parentheses you put equal to 0. 3p plus 2 equals 0. This parentheses you put equal to 0. p plus 1 equals 0. We move the 2, minus 2, minus 2. 3p equals a negative 2. We divide by 3, divide by 3. And this is going to give me p equals a negative 2 thirds. Well, if you look back at the problem, they said that one of my solutions would be negative 2 thirds. Yes. Move the 1, minus 1, minus 1. P equals a negative 1. This is the missing solution. We already, we already knew that this was going to happen. This is the missing solution that they asked us to find. Okay? All right. Keep going. Last problem. A little bit tricky. Let me show you this. They said they're going to ask us to find the area. How do you find the area of a rectangle? Well, you could tell me that it is length times width. You could say it's base times height, but you're going to have to multiply these two sides. The question is, how do you find this? What are we going to use to multiply? If this is x plus 2 on, I mean x plus 12 on a rectangle, this is also x plus 12. Do you understand? Now, to find the perimeter, we have add up all the sides together. And when you add up all the sides, I need to end up with a 4x. 1x plus 1x is 2x. But how many more do I need? I need two more. So that means I should have an x over here and an x over there. Because when you add them, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's 4x. Agree? But I have 12 plus 12. What is 12 plus 12? 12 plus 12 is 24. So that's going to give me, I have a total of 24. But what do they want me to have in the middle? They want me to have a 16 in the middle. This is 8 too much. Uh-oh. What do I have to do? Well, I have to go 16. I have, I'm going to have to subtract 8. I'm going to have to subtract 8 from my 24 to get to 16. But I need to split it up and have half of it over here and half over there up there on the other side. So I take half and get minus 4, and I take half and I get minus 4. Does this make sense? To you, it could be a bit confusing, but look what we have. 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my 4x. 1, 2, 3, 4, there's my 4x. I have 12 Minus 4 is 8. 8 plus 12 is 20. 20 minus 4 is 16. Yes, it checked out. So you need to make sure that you split it up. Now, are we done? No. But how do we find the area? To find the area, we're going to have to multiply. We have to multiply this side times this side, okay? And this is the type of problem that separates us from on-level algebra 2. It's a thinking man's problem, all right? Or a thinking person's problem. So we go x minus 4, x plus 12. You multiply and say x times x. Let me move this up a little bit x times x is x squared. 
x times 12 is 12x. Negative 4 times x is a negative 4x. Negative 4 times 12 is a minus 48. We combine like terms in the middle and we get x squared, 12x minus 4x is a positive 8x minus 48. There is your perimeter. And that's a tough problem, okay? But you have to be ready for that. There will be something very, very, very similar to that on the test, okay? So I've worked a bunch of problems with the review. Again, try the review. If you get stuck, please email us, ask us. We'll try to help you as much as we can, okay? We'll answer your questions. Good luck.